throughout all of your science classes, you've been shown a model of the atom that looks like the one I have on the screen there. You have protons and neutrons which make up the nucleus, so they're in the center, and they're orbited by electrons that go around in like these perfect rings. But unfortunately, even though this thing is good and it helps explain a lot of things in science and chemistry, this model might be a little bit too simplistic. So today we're going to learn about electron configurations and how we think electrons are arranged around the nucleus and how they actually orbit the nucleus. There are four types of atomic orbitals. Atomic orbitals are where you can find electrons. You have to use your imagination a little bit and just pretend like these are three-dimensional clouds or shapes that center themselves around the nucleus. And within each of these shapes, you can find two electrons. An S orbital is shaped like a sphere. There's only one type of S orbital, but just keep in mind that these orbitals can actually expand and get bigger as the energy level increases. A P orbital is shaped like a dumbbell. There are three different types of P orbitals because there's three different ways you can rotate this around the X, Y, and Z axis. Just keep in mind that right at the center where the three axes intersect, that's where you can find the nucleus. A D orbital is clover shaped. It's shaped like a four leaf clover if you look at it carefully enough. There are five different types of D orbitals because there's five different ways you could rotate these clovers around. Last of all, you have F orbitals, which are also clover shaped. They're a bit fancier than the D orbitals, and there are seven different ways you could rotate them in three dimensional space. So there's seven types of F orbitals. Because each orbital can hold two electrons maximum, this means S can hold two, P can hold six, D can hold 10, and F can hold 14 electrons maximum. All right, watch carefully. Let's observe how the orbitals are stacking and overlapping on top of each other. So here's a 1s sphere, here's a 2s sphere, and look to the left of your screen also where you see the graph. Currently we're on 2s. Now we're at 2p. And remember, you see how there's three lines on that graph for 2p? That's because there's three different types of p orbitals. So there's a 2px, a 2py, and there is a 2pz. Okay, so the p orbitals have three different ways they can center themselves around the nucleus. So now comes a 3s, and a 3s sphere is bigger than 2s and 1s because now our atom is getting bigger, so it needs more room so that it can accommodate these electrons. After 3s comes 3px. Now 3py. And finally, a 3pz should be setting in, and this is the last and the third type of p orbital. So the pattern just kind of repeats. Okay, and so after p, you're going to jump to 4s. So locate on your chart, you see 4s. Okay, and a 4s sphere is huge. But after that's filled up, because remember each orbital can hold two electrons, you need more and more orbitals to accommodate these electrons. So now you're going to jump to 3d, and there's five types of d orbitals. Look on your graph, do you notice how there's five like dashed lines representing 3d? Well, that's because d has five orbitals, and they're setting in. Okay, I believe that's the fourth type. And finally, we're going to have our fifth d orbital in the third energy level. Okay, so notice how they all overlap, right? So you have to use your imagination here. The electrons are orbiting and they're inside of these shapes. They're inside like these spheres, these energy clouds. Before I get into the next phase of this lesson and show you how to write electron configurations, you have to recognize that there's a pattern on the periodic table. So remember back a few minutes ago, I mentioned that each orbital can hold two electrons and S has one type, P has three types, D has five, F has seven, and you multiply each of those by two. Well, guess what? The periodic table is also divided into four regions. There's an S block, a P block, a D block, and an F block. And if you count them carefully, you'll see that the number of columns also correspond to the patterns that I discussed earlier. So S has two columns, it can hold two electrons, P has six columns, and it can hold six electrons. D can hold 10 electrons, 
and that's why it has 10 columns. There's only one way to learn this, and it's just to start writing it out. Let's start with hydrogen. Hydrogen we know has one electron, so I'm going to draw one up arrow. And notice how it's in the first energy level, and it's in the s orbital. So hydrogen has one electron in 1s, and we just say it like this. We say 1s1. Helium has two electrons, so there's a total of two arrows, and we say that it's a 1s2. It has two electrons in the 1s orbital. Lithium has a total of three electrons. So this one is 1s2, 2s1. Beryllium has a total of four electrons, so four arrows you can see on the chart. And let's just map it out. I see two arrows in 1s, and I see two arrows in 2s. So it's 1s2, 2s2. Boron has five electrons, therefore five arrows should be shown on the chart. And this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Moving on, let's look at carbon. Carbon has two electrons in 1s. It's got two electrons in 2s. And it's got two electrons in 2p. So it's a 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Nitrogen has a total of seven electrons, seven arrows, 1s2, 2s2. So I'm just looking at the chart and it tells me what I'm supposed to write, 2p3. The chart with the arrows will tell you what to write. Oxygen. Oxygen has a total of eight electrons. So I'm gonna draw eight arrows, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 1s2. 2s2, 2p4. There's a pattern. Fluorine has nine electrons, so it should have nine arrows. Start at the bottom again, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Neon has 10 electrons, I need 10 arrows in the graph. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Let's continue. So we left off on neon, and neon was 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And let's move on to sodium. So sodium is number 11, it's got 11 electrons, 11 arrows. And it's got the same set as neon. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And a 3s1 electron. Magnesium has 12 electrons, so there should be 12 arrows. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And let's circle this. It's got two electrons in 3s, so I'm gonna write it like this. 3s2. Aluminum has 13 total electrons. It's got the same set of electrons as neon, sodium, and magnesium. It's got a 3s2 and 3p1. I see one arrow in 3p. Let's add them up. I'm gonna circle these. Two, two, six, two, one, and let's add them up. 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1. So that will tell me aluminum has 13 electrons. Let's do the same set that we just did, the same three elements, but we're going to use a shortcut. This is called the noble gas shortcut. Okay, So we know that 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 represents neon. So if I were to write sodium again, notice how sodium is in the third row and the noble gas that's right above it and the row above it is neon. So 
If I wrote out the whole sequence for sodium, I would have to write 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. But what I could do is I can compress all of this, and I can just call that neon in brackets, 3s1, and I'm finished with sodium. For magnesium, I could do the same thing. Right? I could write out the whole sequence, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, or I could simplify that. I can call it neon 3s2. And finally, aluminum. So aluminum has an electron in 3p1. So let's call it neon in brackets 3s2, 3p1. And we're done. All right? So we ended off on 3p1 and that's the last electron that aluminum has. I'm just gonna skip ahead to calcium start at the bottom of the graph work your way up 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6 and finally I'll circle this 4s2 that's where calcium ends it's got 20 electrons total. So if I want to use a shortcut I'm going to use argon this time because argon is in the row that's directly above calcium. So all the noble gases end on P6. So argon in brackets, 4s2, and I'm finished with calcium. So it saves me the trouble of having to write out the whole entire sequence. I just write the noble gas in brackets and I'm done. Let's try scandium now. I'm going to draw an arrow here and place an arrow on that line because scandium will actually end on a 3D. So I'm going to write out the sequence again. Okay, the whole entire sequence, 4s2, 3d1. It's got one electron in that 3D. Okay, so I'm going to prepare to use the shortcut, argon in brackets, 4s2, 3d1 and I'm finished. Before I continue explaining this topic, I'm just gonna briefly throw this in there and just tell you that the periodic table is kinda like a coordinate system or it's like a map, okay? So looking at this coordinate plane here, coordinate A we would say is three comma four. So just keep that in mind as I explain the next thing. So not too long ago, I gave you the electron configuration for hydrogen and it was 1s1. Well, we'll see how this kind of applies to that thing that I just mentioned where the periodic table is like a map or it's like a coordinate system. Well, hydrogen is 1s1 because it's in the first row, it's in S block, and it's in the first column. Carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. It ends on 2p2. So that's the coordinate that we're looking for. So I want you to locate carbon on the periodic table. Carbon is in the second row of the periodic table. It's in P block, and it's in the second column of P. So therefore, it's a 2P2. Second row, P block, second column of P. Chlorine is neon in brackets, 3S2, 3P5. It ends on 3P5. So let's locate chlorine on the periodic table. Chlorine is in the third row of the periodic table. It's in P block, and it's in the fifth column of P. So you have to count five columns over. One, two, three, four, five, until you get to chlorine. So again, three P five, third row, P block, fifth column. It's like a coordinate system. Scandium is argon in brackets, four S two, three D one. That's its electron configuration. So we know that it ends on 3d1, so that's the coordinate that we want to look for. Well, the thing about elements that end in d block, okay, so d block is that big rectangle that you see on the periodic table. It's got 10 columns across. The thing about d block is when you enter d block, the rows get renumbered, okay? So even though scandium is in the fourth row overall on the periodic table, when they came up with this electron configuration system, they just decided Let's make scandium row three, okay? So that includes every element in that row. So scandium, titanium, vanadium, 
chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, and zinc. That's all row three. As soon as you leave that row, the numbers reset back to normal. So gallium would be a 4P1, okay? Hope you're, you're still following me. But again, it ends on 3D1. So it's in the third modified row of the periodic table. It's in D block and it's in the first column of D, 3D1. Let's test your knowledge of the periodic table's coordinate system. And I'll just throw a couple out there. Let's start with potassium. Symbol is K, I'm gonna circle it on the periodic table. Where is this element located? What's its coordinate, its ending coordinate? So we know that it's in the fourth row, four. We know it's in S block, S. And we know that it's in the first column of S. So I'm gonna write a one. So it's four S one. Let's try silver. I'm gonna circle it on the periodic table. The symbol is AG. And let's find out where this element is located. What are its coordinates on the periodic table? It's in the fourth modified row because it's in D block. And how many columns over? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine columns over, 4D9. This one is iodine. The symbol for iodine is just I. And let's find out where it's located. Let's figure out its coordinates. It looks like it's just in the regular fifth row because it's in P block. So this is row five, P block, five P, and how many columns over in P block? Three, four, five. Five columns over. So I'm gonna write five P five. Zirconium is next. I'll circle it. The symbol is ZR. And let's find out its coordinates. It's in the fourth modified row because it's in D block. And it is two columns over in D block. So this one is 4D2. Last one. Let's do barium. The symbol for barium is BA. And I know that it is in the sixth row of the periodic table. It's an S block. And it's in the second column of S block. So its ending coordinates is 6S2. Six, Sixth row, S block, second column of S block, 6S2. Alright guys, thanks for watching my lesson on electron configurations. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.